So next up, we have uh, Ran Yi Liu Chen from University of Copenhagen. Are you ready? Very good. The stage okay. is yours. Okay, thanks for the introduction and thank you everyone for coming to my talk. My name is Ran Yi Liu Chen, but you can just call me Chen because it's basically everyone, how everyone call me and it's much simpler. Okay, uh, great. So for the next half an hour, I will introduce to you how to self-test an arbitrary real projective measurement. Okay, so uh, let's begin with some backgrounds. I'm sure that David have already did part of it in his talk, but maybe some of you missed the beginning of that talk, so I will nevertheless do it again, just to make sure you are, m to, to make you more familiar with the topic of self-testing. Okay, so let's start uh, with a simple question. So suppose you interact with a box, uh, some magical box, where you press some button on it, uh, essentially me meaning that you ask them it's some questions from a finite question set, and it gives you some answer from a finite answer set again. Okay, now suppose this box can be quantum, so it, so, but, but you don't know what exactly uh, the state it is preparing or the measurement it is performing. So uh, essentially, uh, our players uh, can model its behavior as a state preparation and a measurement on the state according to the question it gets from you. Okay, so now uh, a simple question would be, oh, if I know what exactly the state and the measurement operators are, can I predict the probability distribution that uh, of its uh, of this question answer pair. The answer is quite simple, right? We just uh, do some matrix multiplication and we sandwich this the uh, measurement operator with the state vector, then we get the probability distribution. Okay, but if somehow I ask you the inverse question, right? Uh, so, for example, if, if we observe this probability distribution p a given x, then I know in my heart that it can be produced by some uh, measurement acting on some state. Uh, can I make sure that uh, this magical box is doing exactly what I have in mind? Okay, okay so in fact, it is not gonna be possible uh, because in principle, there are multiple ways of uh, producing this uh, probability distribution. And in this case, uh, specifically, this box can even be classical, right? It could be some super powerful uh, classical, but still classical computer that's uh, doing matrix multiplication and simulating everything. Uh, as long as we don't put a limitation on its running time, we will not be able to distinct it from any real quantum box, okay? okay. But the good news is that the things is, are different in what we call a Bell scenario. Right, where a referee interacts with two instead of just one uh, quantum players. They ask some questions uh, from the question set X and Y and get answers from A and B. Uh, the players might share states before the game starts and they will perform the measurement according to the question they get and answer uh, from its uh, measurement output. Okay, the only restriction for them is that they are not to, allowed to communicate uh, during the game, right? And again, this, uh, the first uh, question is easy again. We can just uh, uh, compute the uh, probabilistic uh, probability uh, according to the uh, Born's rule. But again, the interesting thing is that for some particular P, it is uh, possible that we can determine the underlying quantum functionality uh, only from those observable, uh, uh, only, sorry, only from, from this uh, probability distribution that this referee can observe, right? And if uh, this thing, such a thing happens, we call it a self-test, and uh, a self-test essentially enables us to classically verify uh, those quantum devices. Uh, the only thing that we need to trust is that, okay, first we need to believe that the, the, the quantum mechanics is true, the quantum theory is the theory that describes the world we are living in, and the second thing is that we need to 
trust the war that we build between those two players. We really need to uh, believe that they are not communicating during the game, and it could be done by uh, locating them far away enough so that they cannot communicate during the game. Uh, okay, let's be more specific about those terminologies. Okay, so from now I will call this uh, probability distribution P, A, B given X, Y a correlation because it somehow reflects how those two players are correlated. And I will call this S a strategy of P, this tuple of uh, the state they share and the measurement operators belongs to Alice and Bob respectively. And I will call that this uh, S is a strategy for this P if uh, it generates this uh, probability distribution. Okay, and again, in principle, there are, uh, it is possible that uh, multiple different, uh, essentially different strategy can give rise to the same probability, but in the self-testing, we somehow want a unique STL that that's, can realize this P. So only in this case, we can uh, kind of verify this S tilde only from this P that we can observe, right? Uh, oh, sorry. But it's somehow uh, too good be, to be true, right? Because uh, there are at least two kind of uh, free mo manipulation that we can do to a strategy that does not affect the correlation it generates, okay? So the first one is that we attach a trivial accelerated state, it could be any state, it's just that we, we don't measure it at all. So it will not affect the uh, probability that the strategy generates. And again, we can change some, change the local basis of the two players, which is again, will not affect the probability distribution. Okay, so if S and S tilde are different only in these ways, we will call this S tilde is a local dilation of S, and we use this uh, hook arrow notation to, to, to denote this uh, relation between those two strategies. Okay, now we are technically ready to define what a self-test mean, okay, so, uh, because in, in, in this uh, scenario, the best way we can hope for is that S tilde is a local dilation of any realization or any strategy of P which means uh, it's okay that there are multiple S generate the same P as long as they can all be mapped to this canonical S tilde with this uh, hook arrow. Okay, so in self-testing, we, we say a correlation self-test uh, strategy, if any uh, real strategy realizing P uh, will have this relation with the canonical S tilde. Uh, all right, then uh, let's give, uh, le let's see a few examples of self-testing. Okay, so maybe the first and the minimal example in self-testing is from, is the one from the Bell inequality, right, the CHSS version, okay, where we have a, a state, the, the qubit, qubit, EPR pair, and those uh, Pauli measures X and Z for, for the two players, and we, uh, okay, it uh, was proved uh, in uh, approximately 1980s uh, that this strategy is self-tested uh, by the correlation it generates, right? Then uh, also after that, uh, people found more examples of self-testing. Then people start to ask, right, what strategy can be self-tested? Okay, so first it uh, has to be at least a quantum, meaning that it has to generate some non-classical correlation, like what uh, CHSH strategy does. Um, and, and also, uh, because uh, strategy S always consists of uh, uh, state and the measurement, so this question can be broken down into the two sub-questions, right? Uh, so which state, we can ask which state can be self-test and which measurement can be self-test. Okay, so for example, by self-testing a state, we essentially mean that oh, given a state, can I find a strategy that is first a self-test, and second, it incorporates its state. Okay, so let's take a closer look at those two sub-questions. Okay, for the question about the state, the picture is uh, somehow clear, because we already know that, okay, 
all bipart pure states can be self-test in this uh, bipartite Bell scenario. And more recently, uh, actually very recently, uh, there is a work showing that oh, actually uh, any multi-apartheid states can be self-tested in the network. So the picture for the self-testing of states is uh, quite clear. But on the other uh, side of the story, the self-testing of measurement is uh, more complicated. Okay, so uh, first of all, it is known that uh, we can only self-test the real measurements. Uh, this is because uh, uh, we don't have this issue for state because in the Schmidt basis, every state is, every bipartite state can always take a real, but uh, it is not true for measurement. Uh, in general, we can not make sure that we can find a basis where all the measurements uh, are real or have real entries in its uh, matrix representation. And if, uh, and in this case, uh, we can only self-test the real measurement because if the real measurement and its complex conjugates will always give rise to the same uh, probability distribution and we cannot distinguish them. So the best one can hope for is self-testing for real measurements. Okay, so for this, uh, what we have known is that we can self-test uh, any combination of uh, X and Z, which is essentially all two-dimensional real projective measurement. And we also know that tensors of Pauli's can be self-tested in the uh, qubit case, qubit case, multiple qubits. And there are also few examples in uh, higher dimensions. Okay. The point is that we don't have a general result so that, like we, what we have for states. And uh, in this work, we essentially prove that all real projective measurements can be self-tested, okay? And to be more precise, uh, for any uh, local dimension D, we can construct uh, binary observables T1 up to T uh, sub approximately D square, uh, such that uh, this following strategy is a self-test, right? So here, uh, the strategy will employ a D-dimensional uh, maximally entangled states, okay, and then, mm, T1 up to D uh, plus one, uh, T D plus one will be Alice's operator, and also this uh, arbitrary observable O tilde will belong to will belong to Alice, and then uh, Bob will use uh, all those uh, observables that we construct, and we can show that this uh, strategy is a self-test, and moreover, it is a robust self-test, which means that if uh, someone can generate a correlation that is close to what this S tilde does, then the strategy he employs should be close to this S tilde in some sense. Yes. Uh, and also, uh, in this construction, since uh, this uh, maximally entangled state together with those tilde, T tildes are, are in independent from O tilde, they are uh, fixed. The only requirement is that uh, they uh, and this O tilde all have the same local dimension D. So uh, we will uh, uh, present uh, on how to construct those T tildes uh, just in, in, in a minute. But uh, it's, I will promise you this is not complicated. It's everyone can construct, write, write down their matrix uh, very easily. Yes, okay, and another thing I want to add about this result is that uh, the question set here, as we can see, it's, uh, we have uh, D plus one plus one, which is D plus two uh, observables for Alice, which is the, which means there are D plus two questions for Alice and approximately the, at the level of D square, number of questions for Bob. So the question set is uh, polynomial size in the dimension D, uh, but nevertheless, the answer set is uh, constant size because um, all those T's are binary observables, meaning that there are only two outcomes and this O tilde, it can have multiple outcomes, but it's a fixed thing, so, uh, 
so the answer set is constant sized. Uh, okay, so uh, apart from this, I actually would like to introduce another result, which I call the DIY self-test, uh, because it is essentially a new method to construct uh, self-tests. Uh, and it's a very handy uh, methodology, so I'm, I'm sure after this talk, you will be able to construct your own self-test very easily. But, uh, and in this, uh, new technology is essentially a generalization of uh, the technique that we use to prove our first theorem. So let's take a closer look uh, at the first theorem and how we prove this. Okay, so for the method, uh, we will call it a post hoc self-testing. And what does it say? Oh, it's essentially take a initially self-test strategy S tilde, which could be CHSH strategy or any strategy from the literature that has been proved uh, uh, to be self-test. And we consider an additional observable, this O tilde. And we ask, what do we, if we extend our original strategy by uh, plug in this uh, O tilde, for example, on Bob's side, and ask whether it is still a self-test, right? So the idea is somehow uh, uh, the following, right? Because this S tilde itself is a self-test uh, from the correlation, we can already certify the state and uh, Alice's operator AX, then uh, this, uh, this AX will generate some correlation with this new observable O tilde and from those correlations and mm, then we can further certify this uh, new observable O tilde, right? And, and this is actually uh, not something that we invent. This similar idea have implicitly employed in previous works and it is actually first summarize and name in, in a very good review paper of this field. Okay, to be more clear about this picture uh, of post hoc self-testing, uh, let's say we have a S tilde, which is a self-test. So from its correlation, we can certify the underlying uh, strategy. Now, if we ask a new question, for example, to Bob, then it has to perform a new measurement corresponding to this O tilde, and it will, and the correlation table it generates will essentially be a little bit larger than uh, the previous one, the one on the left hand side, right? And then the black part, the upper part, is exactly the same because uh, for that part, of the the things are not changed, and for this uh, lower part, the red part, it. Uh, contains some uh, statistic about this O, uh, this O tilde, this new observable, right? And if we can fully characterize this O tilde from the red part, then we can say that this uh, uh, extended, a little bit of extended strategy, S tilde prime is again a self-test. Okay, uh, so, okay, thank you. And we have developed uh, the criterion for this uh, postdoc trick, and we have shown that oh, if on, um, whenever your uh, new observable O tilde satisfies this uh, condition, then uh, you're, you are safe, right? You can say that you can extend your strategy and it is uh, still a self-test, right? And uh, because this, uh, uh, existen existential nature of this condition, uh, it is hard to characterize the set of all O tilde satisfying this, this star condition. But it can be checked via some indefinite programming. Uh, okay, and, and again, this is, a, uh, this is only a sufficient condition. We don't know whether it is necessary, but we have examples where this condition is not satisfied and it's not a self-test, but so, uh, we will guess this is also a necessary condition, right? And 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 uh, as I said before, this uh, in this condition, um, it, this condition is is extensive, which means it's hard to use in practice. 
um, so we give out a special case for binary observables uh, where these conditions can be uh, provided in the closed form and it's uh, much easier to use. Right? So whenever this is satisfying this condition, it lives in the signature of the span of your uh, old observables, those AX, uh, then your extended strategy is again a self-test. Right? So this, is, this only works for binary observables. Right, and, and actually this is uh, how we're gonna prove our main results. So let's see how we do this. Okay, so first we very carefully choose a initial strategy uh, that is a self-test. It is given in the previous work and it in already involves those TX and TYs and this maximum entangled state. Uh, and, and here those TX and TYs are corresponds to some rank one projections where the vectors are just uh, forming the uh, a regular, uh, forming the vertices of a regular D plus one simplex, right? In the two dimensional cases, I guess it's sometimes called a trial state. And in the three dimensional case, those vectors are forming this uh, uh, vertices of a tetrahedron. Okay, so it's not uh, something very complicated. It can be con construct. Okay, now let's uh, use our criterion for the first time. Okay, so let's now plug in some uh, new observables on Bob's side uh, to give some, uh, to, to give a extension of the original strategy. And here those new observables are in the form of uh, uh, TI plus TJ, uh, and we take the signature. And just by using our criterion, we can show that this will remain self-tested because the, the criterion is satisfied. Right, okay, so uh, actually we, now we can use our criteria again because we are, uh, we ha are having more observables on both sides which means we are uh, more powerful than before so we can certify more uh, observables on that side. So here actually what happens here is that we can show that uh, all those observables on both sides, they already span the space of uh, D-dimensional symmetric matrices, right? So which means uh, whatever I have for, for this O tilde, as long as it's binary projective measurement, it will always uh, gonna be in the span. So it will satisfy the criteria again. So we gonna say that this uh, is again a self-test, which is pretty close to our final results, right? Because in the final result, we don't have limitations on the output of this observable but uh, it can be done by regarding a, for example, a L output measurement as, a, as L different binary ones, right? So informationally speaking, they carry the same amount of information. If we can self-test one, then we can self-test uh, the other. And uh, we already know that we can self-test all binary ones, so we, conclude, we can conclude that we can self-test uh, any projective measurement, no matter uh, how many me uh, measurement output it has. Okay, so this is how we achieve our main result. Okay, so finally, let me get to into this uh, new technique, which we call the iterative self-testing. Okay, so as we already seen before in the previous proof, we essentially use this post hoc trick twice, right? Uh, we extend uh, the set of observables on Bob's side first, then we do the same uh, for Alice. Okay. And, and we can do this in, we could do this in two iterations in our examples. Uh, uh, this is because we choose our initial strategy very carefully, but nevertheless, we can ask that, uh, a general question. For any initial strategy, uh, what can we get eventually from this iterative using of post self-testing, and also with how many intuitions can we do that, okay? And for this, we developed this theory, which is uh, kind of surprising to me, because I didn't expect that uh, before. So it basically said, oh, if your uh, binary observable, L tilde, lives in the Jordan algebra generated by either Alice operator or Bob's operator, then, your O tilde can be uh, self-tested in this way. And moreover, it can be done with uh, 
with the uh, iteration of the number of uh, approximately logarithm in the local dimension. Okay, so just to uh, remind you, uh, a Jordan algebra is just uh, uh, the, in a normal associative algebra, we replace the uh, associative product with this uh, Jordan product, which uh, somehow preserve the, the Hermitianness of the matrices, right? And also, uh, whenever this Jordan algebra generates the space of the whole, uh, whole space of the real symmetric matrices, uh, it is equivalent to that uh, these observables AX have a trivial centralizer, the multiple of identity, right? which again can be easily checked. And in this case, uh, everything can be self-tested, right? And, and also, uh, we can show that uh, iteration is necessary. We, can, we have some examples where uh, uh, O lives in this uh, Jordan algebra, but it cannot be self-tested in the first iteration. So this is a really non-trivial trick to use iterations. Okay, so to sum up, the two things that I would like you to take away from my talk that's the first thing we can construct a self-tested strategy for an arbitrary uh, real projective measurement. The second thing is that uh, whenever you have a OTO that lets, lives in the Jordan algebra generated by your uh, by, by the operators of the strategy you choose at the beginning, then you can construct a self-test from that. Uh, okay, uh, so maybe a more a uh, few questions, a uh, few open questions um, in this direction is that uh, in our construction of uh, self-testing arbitrary projective measurement, uh, we have a question set in a, in a polynomial of the local dimension, right? Uh, and we know there are previously some other results of self-testing which contains only Okay, so it might be a little off point question, but I'm wondering, since you can test uh, uh, arbitrary projective measurements, so can you incorporate this tools into some like uh, interactive proofs and uh, other areas like that, so these tools? Uh, sorry, I, I didn't hear clearly of the last part of your uh, So can you, inter, uh, inter uh, can you incorporate uh, these methods uh, with uh, uh, in interactive proofs uh, where you need to uh, make uh, other measurements, like, uh, I'm not sure, but is there possibilities? I'm mean, just uh, interested. I'm not sure I understand your question clearly, but uh, what I can say is that this, uh, I guess you were asking this about this uh, postdoc trick, right? You have yeah. something that is verified at the beginning and you use it to, to self-test, uh, to, to, or to certify something, something more. And actually this idea is, uh, it, it's somehow uh, frequently used in, in this uh, area, especially in the area of uh, cryptography where we have some semi uh, uh, device independent scenario where you certify something, then you use those certified things to certify other things. I think the idea is somehow uh, commonly used. In, in, in various areas. I hope this uh, will answer your questions partially yeah. at least. Thank you. Thanks. Do we have another question? So then I'm, I'm wondering, uh, in your method, what prevents you from proving this result for complex projective measurements? Uh, Right, uh, that's a very good question. Uh, okay, so uh, what I, I can say is that at least in this uh, condition, right, this, uh, this very first result we got for postdoc self-testing, it has nothing to do with the measurement being complex or real. So in principle, it should apply to, to complex measurement. But the point is that for complex measurement, uh, uh, we, we need another definition of uh, self-testing. Yeah, if you are familiar with the area, th there are some approaches uh, uh, to, deal with, to deal with it. For example, we can allow only uh, complex measurement and it's a uh, complex conjugate in, 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 the, in, the, in the realization. And, and for that, uh, 
I think this uh, criterion should also apply to, to that case in some It's just, uh, it is actually one of our next steps uh, of this work. <laughs> okay, so thanks for the question. Thank you very much. Let's thank uh, both the speakers of this session. Thank you.